10 years. It's a time period that can seemingly evaporate in a matter of seconds. Unless your team sucks, because in that case, 10 years is a really goddamn long time. Year after year of failure in what seems like an endless cycle of pain. And since you guys seem to love the misery of others, let's look back at this past decade and find the most agonizing, prolonged, and delicious debacle. The biggest sports fails of the decade is coming up right after this. I hate the Browns. I hate the Browns so goddamn much. Bros, the math doesn't lie. Women absolutely prefer a man who takes care of his junk. It isn't just about the concept of personal grooming. It's about having the right tools to get the job done. That's where Manscaped comes in. If you're using old rusty plug-in clippers, do yourself a favor and throw that bit away. Cause you ain't getting Manscaped, you're getting Manscraped. Let me show you the proper way. Let's look at this fine piece of engineering. Do you see a cord? No. Their long lasting battery allows you to take these waterproof clippers in the damn shower with you. That's the move right there. No cleanup. Oh, you worried about these blades rusting? Guess what, Nancy boy? They are made out of ceramic and they don't rust. And when they eventually get dull, replacing them is damn easy. You can even get replacement blades shipped to you automatically with Manscaped subscription options, where you can not only get all your blades replaced, but all your products like Crop Cleanser Body Soap, which is my favorite, sent right to your house without you getting up, lazy ass. So after this video, it's time to whack those weeds down and flex on yourself hard. Go to the link below, use my code five points and get 20% off and free shipping. Oh, did I mention the perfect package 2.0 comes with all this other kick-ass stuff? Again, use the code five points and we'll throw in the shed travel bag and ship it to you for free. Come on, it's time to live on the top flight of dick clippers, manscaped.com. Real quick, this list is for 10 year long failure, not moments of choking. Oh, those will get their own list. So the 28 to three crowd sit tight. I got you, just not in this video. Number 10, the Yankees $2 billion failure. The Yankees bookended the 2000s with World Series trophies and then saw other teams match their strategy of indiscriminate spending like a drunken sailor and smart roster moves along with stealing signs. Even though they won more regular season games than anybody, made the playoffs seven out of the 10 years and made three ALCSs. If you ask Yankee fans how the decade went, well, you know what the answer will be. Coupled with the fact that the team spent nearly $2 billion in payroll for retread stiffs like Jacoby Ellsbury, Kevin Euclid, yeah, and holding on to A-Rod too long, the Yankees were a modicum of bad spending and playoff failures. Like losing to the Red Sox in the ALDS and ending with this, of course. No! Number nine, the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's one thing to be in the midst of the longest active championship drought in the NHL. It's another to be in the largest market in a hockey crazed nation and tack on another 10 years to that drought like it was nothing. Six of the 10 years, the Leafs didn't even bother to make the playoffs and their first bite at the apple ended in one of the greatest third period chokes in history. Oh, but they weren't done. After tanking a bit harder and getting some real money demanding talent and hiring a Stanley Cup winning coach at a ridiculous salary, they bombed out to the Caps. Then they chased that by losing to their nemesis in seven games. Then after snaking away the prototype big Canadian center for no other reason than that he grew up wearing Leafs pajamas and making room to give their young core their dough, surely the Leafs would make a deep playoff run. And they lost in seven games to the Bruins. You think they were done, but remember that coach they paid all that money for? Well, they fired him in his fifth season. Burn, baby, burn. Number eight, the Big 12 and the Pac-12. Go West, young man, go West. That's where the failure is best. Though it's no secret that the SEC and ACC have dominated both the BCS championship and the college football playoff, it's pretty bad that two major conferences have put up about as much fight as a parent whose kid wants another pack of Pokemon cards after a long day of shopping on Black Friday. Let's start with the Big 12, as 2005 was the last time they won a ship by Texas, and since then, either in the BCS championship game or the playoff, they just haven't showed up. With the Pac-12, zero wins in the BCS championship game in the 2010s and one win in the college football playoff in 2015, and they got smoked in the final versus a Big 10 team. 
Remember, in 2005, these two conferences were the tits of the sport, and now they look like they belong in the CFP like a Cybertruck belongs at a muscle car show. Number 7. Michael Jordan's Ownership of the Hornets On March 17, 2010, Michael Jordan became the first former player to be the majority owner of an NBA team. And with that transaction brought in an era of failure that can only be topped by one other team. M maybe. After he bought the team, Jordan found himself on the other side of the 2011 lockout with little or no sympathy for the players. And then when his team got back to work, they responded by putting up a grand total of seven wins against 59 losses in the shortened season. In 10 years, the team posted seven losing seasons and three first round playoff exits, including two sweeps. It was so bad that in 2014, they changed the name of the squad thinking people would forget who they were. Well, one thing nobody forgets is that MJ handles the basketball side of things too, and his best player, Kemba Walker, got out of town faster than a punch to Steve Kerr's face. Number six, Brazil in the World Cup. It's rare that a decade sees three World Cups, and even rarer that Brazil, the most elite team international soccer has ever seen, didn't win a single one of them. Let's start with 2010, when in South Africa, the Brazilians lost 2-1 to the Netherlands in the quarterfinals. Eight years later in Russia, they lost 2-1 to a very talented Belgium squad, which held off a furious attack to win in the quarters. Though these were both disappointing, nothing tops the outright murder which happened on their home pitch during the 2014 World Cup, one they had essentially been planning for since they won the bid to host the games 10 years prior. Against Germany in the semifinals and missing Neymar due to a dirty injury, the Brazilians got rolled over by a blitz not seen since 1939, a 7-1 tear-inducing dismantling. Though there were signs this Brazilian team wasn't as good as they thought they were, like their 1-1 shootout win versus Chile, the cold loss to the Germans let them know that the world had put them on notice. They are still a great team, but the 2010s were quite unkind to them. Number 5. Clayton Kershaw in October Some narratives seem to keep popping up, and some of them can be easily vanquished with that wonderful eraser we call winning. And for Clayton Kershaw, 2019 was to be the year he got all Mr. Clean on his reputation as a postseason choker. Remember, this guy in the regular season has dominated not just for the decade, but for his entire career. Lights out. In 2013, he was actually great in the postseason. Well, up until game six. 2014, got shelled like Omaha Beach. 2015, good, but unlucky. 2016, yeah, not good. 2017, great in game one. Games five and seven, yeah. 2018, he looked like a man on a mission. Finally shut these people up right up until the World Series. So in 2019, it looked like the pressure was off of him as he was no longer the crux of the rotation. He had support. Looks like they are cruising their way to a game five win and another LCS until his manager decided to bring him in. Okay, and he did this. Yeah, sorry man, that's how the decade ended. Number four, Rutgers football. The first half of the 2010s was actually decent for Rutgers. They appeared in three bowls, won one of them, and used that momentum to join the Big Ten in a head-scratching move that looked like nothing more than a cash grab for the Northeast market. Well, their first year wasn't so bad, finishing eight and five and beating Mitch Kissin' Titties in a bowl game. But since then, dear God, four and eight, 2 and 10, 4 and 8, 1 and 11, 2019, 2 and 10, and 0 and 9 in the con 5. It's so bad they had to rehire the guy that their other partner in misery, Tennessee, rejected. Sounds like a lot of rhythmic slapping is going to continue in North Jersey. Number 3, the New York Knicks. You think the Knicks have had a bad decade? Try the last 40 plus years. But since I don't have time to dissect this one team's total body of fail work, let's examine the decade that was. The first three seasons started off well. The Knicks brought in the possession black hole that was Carmelo Anthony, had Lynn Sanity for eight minutes, and in 2013 finished second in the East and seemingly had a date with the Heat in the conference finals until they got worked by the Pacers of all teams. And that started the downward spiral. In the six seasons, since a 163 and 329 record, six different coaches, including Steve Kerr famously rejecting his old boss, and them hiring the cuckmaker Derek Fisher, and of course, 
Phil Jackson, his terrible moves, and the matriculation fail at the end of the decade, which saw the team trade the unicorn, lose the lottery they tanked for, and bring in the big gun, Julius Randle. This team is a larger pile of shit than James Dolan's music, and getting banned for life from Knicks games for yelling at him to sell the team seems like a wonderful prize. Hopefully Dolan banned this guy's children as well. Absolutely pathetic team and organization. Number two, the Cleveland Browns. If I had to write this video six months ago, the Browns would still be on here, just not as high. Even two weeks ago, it wouldn't be so bad. But now, now is now. Now, you're looking at now, sir. Everything that happens now is happening now. Let's start with some numbers. Zero winning seasons, zero playoff appearances, eight different coaches, one helmet to one skull. To date, the record in the 2010s has been 36 and 103, including a 1 and 31 stretch that featured a perfect 0 and 16 season. You think they had enough with all that losing, so they went out and put together an exciting roster, featuring a number one overall pick, two of LSU's greatest receivers, and an unstoppable pass rusher. Well, there is one thing that could stop Miles Garrett, himself. And put in charge of this shit show was a man that looks more comfortable selling you a green egg or an overpriced Yeti cooler than leading an entire NFL team. Remember, this guy was one of Hugh Jackson's assistants. Did you learn anything? Before we get into the number one fail of the decade, I wanna make a quick mention for my NASCAR folks, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. After being named Rookie of the Year on the Nationwide Tour, Stenhouse was brought in to be the savior of Roush Racing in 2013. After 10 years, only two wins, and a slew of cringy tweets, Stenhouse was just let go. It all went about as well as his attempt at Ninja Warrior. Now for our number one fail of the decade, Michigan versus Ohio State. The dictionary defines the word rivalry as competition for the same objective or for superiority in the same field. Well, when it comes to the game in the 2010s, throw the word competition out. Sure, in 2011, the Wolverines broke a seven year losing streak to the Buckeyes, a six point win in Ann Arbor, but since then it's been all red. After a 14 point whooping in 2014, the blue and yellowish seemed to have enough as prodigal son Jim Harbaugh was brought in to replace Brady Hoke. He immediately got smoked 42 to 13. He's not even on the same playing field. Harbaugh 0 and 5 against his nemesis. The Wolverines 0 for their last nine, one for their last 16. Hell, even UVA beat Virginia Tech after 15 years and Auburn has taken two of three from the tide. And yet, Michigan fan, you are probably stuck with Harbaugh forever. I guess I'll see you at the end of the next decade. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to check out our sponsor, Manscaped, and use my code 5 points for 20% off your first order and free shipping. I'm 5 Points Vids, and Biggest Chokes of the Decade is coming up soon. And you made it to my next video.